today we're going to be comparing two aftermarket 1022 barrels. The Kid 20 inch stainless steel fluted barrel and then the Shaw 18 inch stainless steel fluted barrel. These are the only two barrels in the stainless steel fluted pattern that I had available to me. Uh, I built two different rifles and basically we're going to rotate uh, each barrel into this chassis. We're going to use the same trigger, same scope, just keeping things apples to apples so that uh, this is a fair comparison. And basically it's an accuracy comparison. We're going to be shooting the uh, SK rifle match, the long range, and the SK standard plus. And we're also going to shoot uh, the Ely semi-auto bench rest. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to shoot four groups. Well, we're going to shoot five groups. One's going to be a cider group, and then the four are going to be shot for group size. And then we're going to compare all the groups, and then we're going to see which barrel wins at the end. So stay tuned. Let's give you a rundown on the rifle before we before we uh, film here. So basically, it's uh, this this action came out of a standard uh, just a Woodstock 1022. I think it was a 200 200 dollar gun. Uh, it's an older gun. So pulled that action, put the Shaw Custom barrel on it. Uh, this one has the Kid uh, two stage trigger, which we're going to be using on the other uh, rifle. Also, we also have the KRG Bravo stock. Um, very, very nice stock. I think that's hard to beat for the money. They they just uh, it, it really reminds me of the Manor stock that I have on my CZ four five seven. The er ergonomics are about the same. Uh, so what else do we got here? We got uh, we're using the Vortex Venom scope. Both of them are going to have the Venom scope on it. Uh, AccuTac bipod, Area 419 rail, and the fit and finish on this Shaw barrel is very, very nice. I, I haven't found a, a flaw in it. it. It's beautiful. Okay, so how this is going to go, I'm going to shoot five rounds on the cider just to make sure that we're we're hitting the, the target where, where we're supposed to be because we got a lot of, there's a lot going on on this target and I don't want to run uh, one group into another so I'm gonna run five shots on a, on a cider for each different ammunition and then four groups so another 20 shots so here we go this is the rifle match Boy, not too good. Okay, here we go with the long range. Okay, that's it for the long range. Okay, here we go. Semi auto bench rest, Ely. Shooting the groups.
Wow. That last group just went boom. Okay, got the barrel switched out. Let me see if you can see that. Kid, 20 inch fluted barrel. Same chassis, same trigger. That's it on the standard. Okay, now this one's the Ely Semi-Auto Bench Rest. Last groups. All right, here we go. Okay, for some reason the Ely Semi-Auto likes to get caught up in the magazine. I end up having to slam the magazine to get the rounds to come back up to the feed lips. I also forgot to press record at the target camera, so I had to post the finished target in the upper left hand corner, and it's the bottom row. Venus. So the craftsmanship on this kid barrel is absolutely beautiful inside and out. Now the Shaw barrel, we did find some chattering and some other things we did not like on the inside, so we're going to be sending that barrel back. We will be doing some lot testing, so hopefully we can find something that shoots better than the ammo we used today did. Okay, let's go over these targets. Uh, the Shaw came in at the total average of 1.40. The rifle match shot 1.37. The SK at long range match 1.30, the standard plus 1.55, and the Ely Sabre came in at 1.40. Kid, pretty much uh, the same thing, uh, did shoot better, 1.28 total average. The rifle match 166, long range match 1.06, which happened to be the number one um, group uh, out of all, all eight groups. That was the best I could do was 1.06, the standard plus 1.33. The Ely Sabre came in at number two at 1.08. Okay, so the kid was definitely the winner at 1.28 versus the 1.40 for the Shaw. I did uh, scope the Shaw and I did see some things I did not like. There was quite a bit of chatter inside the barrel. The chamber had uh, some very uh, bad scarring. It looked like it the tool had got heated up so the inside of the uh, the chamber was discolored like it was from heat. So I'm going to try and send that barrel back and hopefully replace it. So this has been my second video so if you like what you see please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe. Hopefully we can get some manufacturers on board and do some more product testing. 
But for right now, this is all I have for you. So thank you for watching.